are there female specific requirements for sleep that vary across the menstrual cycle and or by age or just generally, you know, do men and women need to think about the need for sleep differently? Yeah. Um, part of it is the obvious, like when you're talking about sleep temperature, right? Women and men have variations in their sleep temperature and what's optimal. So looking at that, like you need to create an environment for you that is cool, comfortable, which is probably going to be different from your partner who might be sharing your bed. So that becomes a sticky point. When we talk about the menstrual cycle, there are definitive changes in sleep architecture. We're seeing that in around the mid luteal to the premenstrual. So, you know, that about 10 days before your period starts, significant change in your slow wave sleep. There's less of it. Latency is increased. So you have a longer time to get to sleep and you have more light sleep. So overall, you know, less of that deep recovery sleep. And this is where women tend to have more of their mood issues too, because of estrogens play with serotonin in the brain. So we really need to nail down our sleep hygiene in that time period. Um, so looking at things like L-theanine and apigenin and looking at your room temperature and the screens and all the things that you've talked about for the most part about sleep and sleep hygiene, super important. And then of course, as you get older in both men and women, it becomes more difficult to sleep, but we see a significant issue with insomnia in women who have really bad hot flushes and significant uh, menopausal symptoms. And again, this has to do with lots of the perturbations from temperatures of night sweats, increased sympathetic load, um, not being able to get into a parasympathetic state. So this is where working with a specific sleep specialist might come into play. We can also look at using some adaptogens, the rhodiola stacked with theanine um, and looking at the cold temperature, getting people to use the non-sleep deep rest or yoga nidra or some other kind of meditative property that they can then access when they're in bed. So there's a lot of different things that we have to be aware of. Um, and again, in that perimenopausal state, we see that significant change in sleep and sleep architecture and quality of the sleep, but men don't have the same thing. So women have to be a little bit more aligned with what's happening from a hormonal profile standpoint, because it does definitively affect serotonin, and melatonin and sleep architecture because of the interplay that estrogen has on the brain and the receptors.